Hi, my name is Manish Gupta, and in this video, I'm going to talk about control net, which is about adding conditional control to text to image diffusion models. Right? So all of us uh, by now know about diffusion models, and we also know how difficult it is to essentially have control in that in these text to image diffusion models. Of course, people have tried, uh, um, you know, text based control. So essentially you can use a diffusion model to create an image uh, following a particular uh, piece of text. However, uh, you know, just using text is very uh, is is limited in uh, uh, the expressive ability, right? So uh, you want to give the user a better ability uh, to precisely express complex layouts, poses, shapes, and forms, which are very difficult to express using text prompts. Uh, uh, for example, the question to ask is, can we enable finer grained spatial control by letting users express uh, very complex uh, additional images that directly specify what is there in their heads, right? So for example, uh, you know, this is what I want the image to look like. So this is more like a sketch, uh, a canny edge based sketch. And then what I want to do is to be able to generate uh, images that follow this sketch uh, kind of a, a, a style, right? Uh, of course, I can combine the sketch along with a piece of text and then have a have a combined control, so con control based on the uh, input canny edge uh, as well as on the input text prompt and then generate those images. Okay. Similarly, here is another example where there is input human pose and along with that there could be a prompt and then you can generate, uh, you know, a chef in kitchen with that particular pose. If you basically want to generate without a text prompt, that is also possible. And here the default prompt used was just a high quality, detailed and professional image. That's it. Right. But if you basically combine the input human pose along with this text in Lincoln statue, this is what you expect to get. Okay. Uh, learning these conditional controls for very large text to image diffusion models is basically challenging, uh, specifically because there is lack of enough training data. How do you get enough training data to basically take uh, input Kenny edges, human pose, uh, you know, half lines or user scribbles like sketches or human key points, skeleton, segmentation maps, skeletons, uh, depths, uh, shape normals, any of those ways of expressing, uh, you know, image based uh, uh, hints. Um, so the input data, uh, the training data is very small for these kinds of things. Typically, the training data sets around these kinds of things are in tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of instances, while, um, while, 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 you know, larger diffusion models have been trained on millions of images in that sense, right? The second thing is that continued training of a large pre-trained model with limited data. Uh, you know, you could basically take a pre-trained diffusion model and then continue continue train it using this limited small amount of data, but that can cause overfitting or catastrophic forgetting. How do you basically tackle those challenges? Those challenges are dealt with, the, in, with uh, using the control net architecture. In fact, control net architecture builds on top of stable diffusion. So what you see here on the you know left side of this picture is the stable diffusion architecture. Uh, and uh, what control net does is to essentially uh, somehow uh, you know um, come up with uh, an additional um, uh, you know update to the original weights without disturbing the original weights. Okay, so so in some ways control net is very similar to LoRa when I think about it. Uh, you know where there is a separate set of weights around every original weight which is updated and learned in that senses. Okay, but this one of course is in the image domain and that too in the image diffusion domain. Okay. So, so for example, if originally this is how your network looked like, there was a neural network block which took input X and produced Y. Now you're going to still, uh, you know, take X as input and pass it to the original neural network block, which is frozen. But you also have a trainable copy of the neural network block. So now you can actually also pass in a control image C uh, with the uh, process through zero convolutions, and then uh, pass, you know, a, you basically then add X plus. Uh, um, uh, this uh, processed image after zero convolutions. And uh, after that, you essentially pass it through the same F block, F being uh, this block, right? This this F block. So this is F block. You basically, uh, it's a trainable copy. So therefore, you basically pass through the same F. Uh, and uh, then, uh, so, so this is zero convolutions Z, right? With uh, uh, parameters Z1, right? You pass through the F block, which has parameters uh, theta C, theta C, and then, uh, you finally essentially, uh, you know, apply zero convolutions again on top of it, uh, you know, which has parameters essentially Z2. And uh, then uh, the final output is going to be a combination of F X theta, uh, which is basically coming from here. 
and z of whatever you know which is coming from the right side uh, from from this part of the block okay so that's that so now um, uh, so control net sort of preserves the quality and capabilities of the original long, the large model by locking its parameters so it sort of freezes the parameters of the original model and essentially only you know, uh, makes a trainable copy and then you know while training you essentially upgrade the parameters z1 z2 uh, and uh, uh, theta c is z1 z2 and theta c which are basically parameters of the right branch okay of the control net branch now, of course, you have zero convolutions. You basically they're called zero convolutions because you initialize them using zeros, and it ensures that harmful noise is not added to the deep features of the large diffusion model uh, uh, at the beginning of the training. At the beginning of the training, you want the model to be as close to the original uh, diffusion model as possible. Okay, so so which so zero convolution basically just means these convolutions are basically both weights and bias are initialized to zero. So this is how control net has been implemented using the stable diffusion architecture. So stable diffusion architecture basically has, uh, uh, you know, 12. Uh, <coughs> so it's a, it's a unit architecture. It has 12 encoder blocks as you see them here, right? Uh, it also, so, so that's the three cross uh, four encoder blocks, right? So that's encoder blocks and then it has 12 decoder blocks and there, and there is also a middle block in, the, in, the, in there, right? So totally 25 different layers in the stable diffusion architect unit architecture. Now, uh, uh, so eight of these blocks are downsampling or upsampling convolution layers, and uh, only 17 blocks. Uh, so, so other 17. So eight of these blocks are of course downsampling or upsampling, but the other 17 blocks out of these 25, uh, they each contain four ResNet layers and two VITs basically, right? So uh, and then you know for, to complete a st full stable diffusion model, of course you have to basically also take text prompt and time encoding. So text prompt is basically passed pass through a text encoder, and time encoding is passed through a time encoder, and it's of course fed to each of those blocks, as you see uh, right here being fed. Right, uh, time encoder essentially encodes the diffusion time steps, while the text encoder, of course, uh, encodes the text prompts. Uh, for text encoder, they use the clip text encoder. Okay. Now, but what you see on the right side is effectively the control and architecture. And as you see, the control and architecture is applicable to each of those encoder layers. So around each of those encoder layers, basically you have a control net block. So A, a B, C, D, E, and then uh, they, uh, um, you know, are surrounded. Uh, I mean, they basically have your, your zero convolutions also. And, uh, uh, you know, appropriately uh, um, at, at the appropriate times, essentially you also add those zero convolutions and so on. And finally, um, but the outputs are essentially merged with the uh, decoder blocks in the stable diffusion decoder. Yeah, so that's that. Now, how does training inference work for control net? Well, uh, stable diffusion essentially uses the pre-processing method uh, where they basically convert the 512 cross 512 images to 64 cross 64 latent space. It's basically good for uh, both quality as well as for inference speed that you essentially have uh, this diffusion happening in the latent space, right? So similarly, they also take uh, the input conditioning image. So, so basically, oh, so I forgot to mention, of course, the, while the uh, text prompt uh, and the input image basically goes to the original stable diffusion, uh, of course, the conditioning image, whether it is half transform or uh, uh, sketches or whatever, right, uh, uh, canny edge detection, pose, and so on, they all basically go to the control net as input. <coughs> so they also uh, pre-process the input conditioning image to the 64 cross 64 output, uh, uh, you know, 64 cross 64 feature space vector. Now, this is of course done using convolutions and uh, um, a con a convolution layers, basically, right? Uh, and overall, then the training proceeds as per stable diffusion or other as per the typical DDPMs, the diffusion models, um, you know, where the idea is to uh, take uh, an image Z0, um, take an image Z0, and then do a diffusion progressively, uh, progressively, basically across different time steps T, uh, so as to add the noise to the image. Uh, and uh, um, produce a noisy image at T. So this noisy image at T, uh, on the way you are trying to learn these uh, theta parameters to predict the noise added to the image at T. Okay. So CT is the text prompt, CF is the conditioning image, and T is the time step. So the idea is that to be able to make sure that it can work even without the text prompt, you basically randomly replace 50% of the time, 50% of the text prompts CT with empty empty strings, right? And what to observe while doing training is that there is sudden convergence that happens. So at a particular point of training, after after a particular number of epochs of training, abruptly they real they they find that the model starts to respond to the input conditioning image. Before that, it basically just generates diffusion-based images, not really great. Uh, but uh, you know, at a particular point in time, uh, a particular number of epochs, they observe that a sudden convergence happens, and you start uh, seeing images which follow the input conditioning uh, control, right? 
So they also do classifier free guidance based uh, training. Uh, now, uh, again, classifier free guidance is uh, uh, very, very popular in stable diffusion to generate high quality images, where the idea is that the final noise that you add is a combination uh, of, uh, uh, you know, uh, unconditional output. So the final output is a combination. The final output is basically a combination of the unconditional output and the conditional output. Uh, and, and the difference in between the conditional and unconditional output weighted by this factor uh, beta, right? Now, so this goes on with the typical uh, image diffusion and uh, uh, text prompts and so on. Now, when you have a conditional uh, image CF, it can be added to both of them. I mean, you could basically add it to unconditional part as well as to conditional part, of course, right? Um, so what they uh, end up doing is to essentially add CF to the conditional part uh, and that to the way they do that is to basically uh, not add CF directly, but uh, add CF to the conditional part and then multiply by a weight WI to each connection between the stable diffusion and control net. So each connection that is going on between stable diffusion and control net that you see here, right? They basically uh, uh, they basically multiply by a weight WI, where WI essentially depends on the uh, on the on the size of the ith block. Okay. So, based, so overall, they of course do CFG conditional classifier free guidance, but besides that, for the conditioning image, they also do resolution weighing. So they basically take the CF, they add it to the conditioning part EC, uh, epsilon C, but uh, with the appropriate weight, uh, which is defined by the uh, by the by the size of the ith block. So how does control it perform? So, uh, so to be able to measure how does control perform, there, here are some case studies, right? So you can actually give various kinds of conditioning information. So you could give a sketch, you could give a normalization map, you could give a normal map, sorry, you could give a depth map, you could give Kenny edges, you could give uh, MLSD line kind of sketches, you could give uh, head sketches, you could give segmentation maps, you could give human pose maps and so on. And as you see, you know, these are the kind of images that get generated. So the kind of images which sort of follow uh, the input conditioning information and uh, you know, super high quality images, right? Uh, the other way they evaluate things is also by giving multiple conditions at a time. So what if I basically give these two images? Uh, you know, one is a depth map, the other is a pose map, uh, or a pose kind of information, and you want the to generate images which follow both. It turns out that yes, it can actually take these and of course, it can also take the text caption and essentially uh, generate an image which follows both of those conditioning information. So yes, they've, introduced, they've, they've experimented with multiple conditions and found that the model um, does respect uh, multiple conditions, both the text and also on the image side. Um, the next kind of quantitative evaluation that they do is to basically take images uh, and their, uh, so basically take the segmentation labels of images and then ask the model to actually create images based on those segmentation maps. And once the images have been created, you take those images and pass them through the same, uh, you know, semantic segmentation model and get back the segmentation map. So you start from segmentation maps, you know, generate images using control net and then apply some segmentation algorithm and get segmentation again. And then you com compare the, you know, uh, the, the initial and the later segmentations, uh, whatever is the IOU. So, you know, if control net really created images that uh, followed the segmentation maps, then segmentation algorithm should be able to rediscover that segmentation map, right? So and what they found was that, uh, yes, control net basically gives you way better results compared to other existing baselines uh, to follow uh, the control information in the user input. Um, lastly, they also did experiments with the human uh, uh, evaluation. So essentially you take several different algorithms and control net also, and try to evaluate, ask humans, hey, uh, what is the, you know, which one has better quality? So I think on a scale of one to five, they basically ask people to rate how good is the quality of the result. They also ask people to rate the condition fidelity. So how well does the, uh, you know, output uh, uh, resonate with the conditions? How good it follows the condition which was supplied conditioning image, right? And they, of course, found control net to perform much better. Now, you know, here are a few more uh, discussions about their methods. So they tried to, you know, uh, uh, work with different um, different uh, ablations of their method. So basically, for example, uh, this one is the original control net, but uh, here is, uh, um, you know, without zero convolution. So they have convolutions, but not zero initialized. And then the third one, they basically did a massive change. They basically just replaced the copy of the original model. Right? And as you see, basically, whether it is the no prompt case or, uh, you know, they also experimented with other kind of cases. So a perfect prompt, perfect text prompt, a conflicting prompt. So essentially, you know, uh, you uh, want a delicious cake in that sense. But then the conditioning information says something else. How can you come with a delicious cake there, right? 
or insufficient prompt. So basically, just saying house rather than saying, uh, yeah, you know, uh, uh, so high. So, so essentially, rather than saying uh, uh, high quality, extremely detailed house and so on. So insufficient prompt, right? In all the cases, you observe that the original control net model can actually lead to very high quality images. But yes, I mean, you know, as you as you make the model worse and worse by removing things that are the main parts of the model, you really get poor quality images. So here are some more examples. You can actually also give uh, cartoon line drawings as input and then generate uh, anime uh, kind of like, uh, uh, you know, nice pictures out of these anime line drawings. You can uh, also what they observed is that if the input uh, sketch is sort of amb uh, ambiguous in nature, it can actually generate uh, images which try to capture a diverse set of things uh, which can follow this uh, input to conditioning image. Right? Uh, lastly, they also said that, uh, well, I mean, although most of the experiments have been done on stable diffusion, you can actually also move this to various kinds of other diffusion models. And uh, uh, combining control it with other kinds of diffusion models is super easy. All you need to do is to essentially do this. Essentially, for every um, for every uh, matrix in the neural network, all you need to do is to essentially uh, combine, uh, is to add this extra control net uh, guy. I mean, a trainable copy of the original parameters and then zero convolutions, uh, uh, um, you know, before and after the trainable copy. So in summary, in this video, I talked about control net, which is basically about adding specially localized input conditions to a pre-trained text to image diffusion model via efficient fine tuning, right? So that it does not really forget what it learned in the pre-training stage. It reuses the large scale pre-trained layers and then the original model and trainable copy are sort of connected with zero convolutions to eliminate any harmful noise during training. And uh, then, uh, uh, well, uh, using uh, control net, you can control any kinds of diffusion models, including stable diffusion, you know, protogen, comic diffusion, and so on, um, by conditioning them on Kenny edges, half lines, uh, user sketches or scribbles, human key points, segmentation maps, shape normals, depths, or cartoon line drawings. That's it for this video. Hope you liked the video. Thank you for watching. Connect with me on my LinkedIn or look at my search on my homepage. Thank you.